Hey, it's Aaron, and today I'm with a Texo Overland Woolly Bear. These are really cool. These are uh, basically a camp trailer. Um, what you're using it for is uh, it's an all-in-one kind of campsite setup so that you can just show up and start camping. You don't have to do all the setup normally involved. It's a very, very cool system. Uh, rooftop tent up here and a uh, kitchen in here, storage down here, refrigerator over here. There are batteries, that's what this box in the very front is. Uh, those will provide 12 volt power. Um, and then optionally you can add other things. I'll show you some of that. There is a, uh, there's a solar panel and a battery system in here that gives you uh, 110 outlets. And just a lot of useful storage. So all your gear and food and whatever can go in here. It locks, um, very, very cool. So uh, let's do an overview of the trailer first and then we'll talk about uh, the details. I'll open some of this up and start showing you what's going on. And over all of this, I'll overlay photos of our camping this last weekend where we took the whole family. We went out, in the, out into the uh, Snowy Range Mountains, if you know where that is, here in Wyoming. And I'll show you uh, photos of how we set up, what our campsite looked like, and how awesome this thing was to have. This in particular is the Overland Edition, which has a couple of other things, um, but the primary purpose of any of these uh, Woolly Bear trailers um, is that it has a fully articulating off-road hitch, it has an off-road ready suspension on the back, and you can hitch it up to something cool like that Ram 1500 Rebel that it's hooked to and we used uh, for this weekend, where the truck and the trailer have basically the same off-road capability, so uh, you don't worry about whether or not you can get somewhere. Once you get there, you set it up, 10 or 15 minutes, your camp is done and you're ready to go. You can start your fire and hang out. So, uh, yeah, let me talk about some overview first. So let's talk about uh, the general what's going on. So this is a little less than 11 feet, it's about 10 feet, eight inches if I remember right. That's from the front of the hitch all the way to the back of the trailer. Uh, it has a ground clearance of around nine inches, uh, pretty close to that, I think. It's full all steel construction. None of this is plastic. This is all steel, including the logos. So Tacta Outdoors, Woolly Bear, etc. cetera. Uh, it is, it is uh, empty. It is rated at less than 1,300 pounds. It's about 1270, I think is the number. Uh, once you put all of your gear on it, you're probably going to be closer to that uh, 2000 pound area. For a truck like that Ram, that is nothing. It is so easy to pull. You, I, in fact, we could literally pull this with our family minivan if we wanted to. Um, it wouldn't be able to go as off-road as this could, but we could do it if we wanted to. So you could pull it with just about any off-road ready vehicle. You could pull it with a Subaru. Most Subaru models have a, a tow rating of around 3,000 pounds. Uh, most uh, small pickup trucks have about 5,000 pounds. So you could pull this with pretty much anything from your uh, Subaru Outback all the way to like a Ford Maverick all the way to this Ram 1500. So lots of options for that, which is cool. All it requires is a standard receiver hitch on that end. So, uh, that's about the overview. So that, that, the price tag for this starts at about $14,000. Um, for that, you're getting the basic trailer. I believe the rooftop tent is included. Uh, this is a Taxa rooftop tent. So I'll show you more, uh, probably mostly in photos. I don't really wanna get everything out and set it up right here, um, but we can. Uh, I'll show you in, at least in photos, but really what it comes down to is there's four latches and you push up your tent is basically up. There's a little inside thing you gotta stick up to stabilize the back end so it doesn't come back down and that's it, You're, you have a tent. Uh, there's a ladder that attaches the back and all of that, I'll show you that. So let's start on this end because this for me is probably the most exciting part of the trailer. Uh, the reason I liked it so much wasn't, I mean the tent was super convenient, that was awesome, but really the reason I liked it the most was because of this. So, uh, you undo the latches like this. I left that one locked because I wanted to show you if there's, if it's locked, you can't push the button, you can't get this out, you can't lever it, anything. It's pretty much not theft proof, but it'll deter most everything, most everybody. 
you just unlock it like that. Uh, every one of these uses the same key and that locks the same way. Once you're done, you open it and you pop it down. This is your kitchen work table, right? Here's your kitchen counter. Um, you got storage all in here. Uh, your stove like this is a pretty standard Coleman two burner. Um, you can run it off of the small propane bottles or this has a uh, mini propane bottle, it's about yay big, hangs right there on that bracket. That's uh, one of the options for this trailer. Um, those little bottles or even a full size bottle will hang right here and you can attach, you know, use your, your conversion stuff, which uh, I was doing out while we were out so that you can run this off of that. Um, very cool to have that much gas and power. Uh, if you happen to have one of those little like uh, uh, false fireplaces or something like that that runs off of that for heat, uh, you could totally do that as well. So really cool setup. We had food. I'll show you photos of what we had. Uh, we had food all in here. I pulled this battery out. So this is an option. This is a Goal Zero uh, small battery brick. This holds enough power to run maybe, uh, you could probably f charge your phone off of this maybe 50 times. It holds a, a fair amount of juice. Um, if you couple it with the solar panels, which are in the other side, I'll show you those. Uh, and I'll show you a photo of how we had this set up just on the picnic table at the campsite. Uh, this will draw power from the sun. It was actually drawing more power than we were using with two phones attached. So I had a, I had a 110 outlet plugged in with my phone in a, uh, in a, uh, wireless charger and then we had another phone on this high speed charger over here with a USB-C and we were still getting more power from that little solar panel to fill this than we were using for those two charges. There are limits to this. Um, the amperage is not high enough to run something like say a coffee pot. Uh, you'll probably hit the top of that because the amperage on this I believe is about 12 um, and a lot of coffee pots and um, things like your, your, I don't know, your teapot, things like that, the water boilers, um, they're running closer to 15. Uh, so you will probably uh, run into issues trying to use this. Um, it is a 500 watt unit, really, really cool, but it's an add-on. It does not come with the trailer. What the trailer does come with is this right here. This is your on and off setting, you have lights, uh, you probably can't see them from there, but there's lighting under here. Um, these control those. These are fuses, they're individually fused. And then you have a couple of uh, 12 volt outlets up here. So just your standard, that's USBs, and then a 12 volt up here. That's uh, kind of your standard where you can plug in and stuff. You have an indicator here that shows you how much power is uh, being drawn or available from those two batteries. Those are two uh, 12 volt batteries in that box up there. And you can kind of use this for, uh, well, basically pretty much everything. Um, so if you don't have something like this, or if you're using a standard gas generator, you can use this without running that uh, to get a little bit of power to do a few things. So pretty cool, and the lighting is especially cool. There's also lights up here. You can run, uh, it's a USB plug, so you can take a little ba battery bank and plug it in and run those lights, uh, or you can run an extension and plug them in down here. Really cool setup. The storage is awesome. Uh, we got a lot of stuff in here. We got almost all our food in here and down here. Now one thing to note, you see how I move my hand really quickly? It's really easy to catch your hand in there and pinch it. Uh, down in here we had food all on this side, spare shoes. This is a uh, this is a camp chair and this is a camp table. Um, we didn't really use those because we have our own that we had also packed. Um, but it gives you an idea of the storage. It runs way back to here, so you have lots of room to shove things in there. We had all of our snacks and that kind of stuff down in here, and then over here is a fridge. So you could have any kind of ice chest in here. This one happens to be a powered one. So this is a Dometic, um, plugs into a 12 volt receptacle in the back. That runs off of that panel that I showed you up there. Uh, so you can run a fridge back here. Um, it opens far enough that this one in particular will open all the way. Um, 
I like these kind of fridges, they're useful, uh, but the caveat I would have is I would only put things in here that if they warm up, it's okay. Uh, the reason I say that is because these, in my experience, have a tendency to decide not to run. For whatever reason, they decide to shut off. And you don't know that they've done that until you open it up and look at it. Um, so this is where we kept all of our drinks, uh, our eggs, because eggs can warm up and cool down. As long as they don't get too hot, they're fine. Uh, that sort of thing. Everything else we kept in a standard ice chest, because you can control that. And it's analog. There's no question of whether or not it's working. But really convenient to have that just slide out. Now, this trailer is not level. When you pull up and set up, each of these has feet comes down. There's four. So there's one here. There's two in the back that go that way. And then there's one more over there. You level it with those. Uh, the easiest way to level this is just eyeball. Um, you can do it while it's still hitched because the hitch has fully 360 degree uh, articulation. So uh, what, what we did is I set it down. I put those all the way down. And then I just stood behind it and eyeballed it and leveled it from both sides. So from this end and from that end and just leveled it out. Really easy to do, it's just a hand crank, simple. Um, really nice setup, tons of storage in here. Wheel chocks, uh, which are important. Um, I still have it hooked to the truck, uh, so I didn't chalk it pulling it over here uh, to show you this, but tons of storage across here. You can see that as well. And again, I'm gonna be just cycling photos through here so you can see what we're talking about. Um, one of the things I do like a lot, and let me, let me show it to you and then we'll go around the other side and I'll show you the rest of the storage. So here's a better view of what's going on at the hitch itself. Uh, this is the bracket I was talking about before. This holds two 12 volt uh, lead acid batteries. This is a modular rack, so you can connect all kinds of things to it. This as well, um, and it's super useful when the tailgate is down, this is just the right spot to step on this and step into the truck so you don't have to do a bunch of maneuvering. This sort of uh, jack is one of my favorites. And the reason being, is that it's so easy to use. So I just deployed it, and then I just pull this out a little bit and pop that down, and now I can turn this to set that jack wherever it needs to be. I really love this kind of jack uh, versus the ones that are always down. So I'm glad to see that it's included on this one. See if I can get it to, oh, I got the wheel turned wrong. There we go. Uh, and then I just wanna show you the articulating hitch. So you can see um, it's attached here at the tongue. You could use a different kind of hitch on here if you wanted. So if you wanted a regular bumper pull, you could do that. I would not recommend it uh, because it's too easy to pop it off. Um, so if you're going off-road and doing a lot of movement, you really want something like this. This is one of the two different kinds of these that I've seen. These articulating hitches are, are really popular. This one in particular is easy to use because once you set it up, you put your jack down, you do all of that, all you have to do is pull this pin out. So you take the cotter out, you pull this pin out, this hinges up on both sides and your trailer lifts right off. Uh, you leave this side on the truck and then uh, what that allows you to do is basically leave it and it can't be stolen uh, because they don't have the receiver end. So pretty neat setup, uh, really, really love these kind of articulating hitches. I might do a video just on those if I have some time today. So let's go around the other side and talk about the, other the rest of the storage on this thing. So from right here, you can see uh, the spare tire mount right here. Um, if I were to own this, I would lock this, so I would have locking screws for this tire. Otherwise, great setup. Um, again, this big storage area, it's accessible from both sides. Uh, you could do all kinds of things, like you could make a barrier here, you could do like I did, where we just stacked a bunch of things in there and then ran straps, because you have all of these convenient strap down points where you can hook something and strap it. Uh, this right here is a big storage bin. Uh, that I forgot to unlock. <laughs> That's me being professional, getting my setup. So on this one, this comes up. You can see it's on pistons. And then you can see huge amounts of storage. So we got five sleeping bags in here, five rolled up sleeping bags, plus a couple of ground blankets 
plus the stuff that you already see in here, sands this. I did not take this water jug with us because uh, I had a big five gallon uh, Coleman style that I just strapped right here on this step, which was perfect. Um, but in here, this is the ladder for the, uh, for the tent up here. So you can see it hooks here if you have a sideways entry and hooks on that end if you have a front entry and there's more of these on that side. This in particular is a front entry so it was hooked on the back end of the trailer there. This is your little jack for running those uh, stands. So it just hooks on the end right there and you turn it. Pretty easy. Uh, I had my, uh, had my 14 year old daughter do most of these actually. And then you have as part of that battery I showed you, this is the solar panels. So they just open up and fold out. Again, I'll show you a photo of the setup for that. Wiring and stuff is back here. And then the miscellaneous storage bag. So this is the propane tank I was talking about. This is more than enough for probably an average week of camping uh, with two or three meals a day. Uh, and then you have this bin that just kind of was included with it. But like I said, we fit all of our uh, five sleeping bags in here, ground covers, uh, which are furniture pads, those big heavy furniture pads is what we use. Uh, and some of these camp pillows and also uh, those little tiny air mattresses that are in a tube about that big. Uh, so again, for five of us, we got all of our stuff in here pretty great we had our 10 person tent that we ended up not using was up here we had uh yeah looking at the photo you can see we had we had a fair amount of stuff up here my kids uh acoustic guitar and a few other things and then we had a bunch of stuff in here like uh that was uh water so we took plastic water bottles because they're convenient uh, we took a bunch of those we took a bunch of uh monsters because the kids drink all the soda, uh, <laughs> you know. Anyway, we had a lot of stuff in here. It was pretty, pretty awesome. Now, really quick, I will show you the tent and then we'll wrap this up. Okay, for the tent setup, these are your main latches. They do most of the actual work. Uh, these are good compression. So when you're putting it away, you kind of have to, you have to hook this in and really pull that down to get this to seal. Uh, and then these front latches, they lock. So once you have those compressions done, you can do this and then lock it. Um, my only beef with this setup is each of these locks, there's two of them, are a separate key. So you're constantly guessing which is which. A um, little bit of an annoyance. They could have been easily keyed to the same, uh, keyed the same. But anyway, you push this to release and lift up and it comes off. Do the same on the other side, plus this compression on this side. And then you come up and there's your tent. The pistons will do most of the work. There's a bar on the inside you pull up, two little bars that click on it. I'll just show you photos. I'm not gonna try to haul the camera around and do make this happen. But as you can see, very quick setup. So once you're ready to tear it down, you come up here, you undo your interior bars, you grab this thing and you just give it a pull till you can get a hold of this handle. You let the air decompress. So what I learned was those side windows, just make sure they're slightly unzipped at least halfway uh, so the air can blow out. And then it comes out the front because you haven't zipped up the front. And then you just stuff things away. Make sure this strap gets shoved in there. So once you have all that stuff shoved away, 
just come over here, push this stuff in. Make sure it all gets in there. You'll, you may, may or may not be able to see it from the camera there, but there are these rubber seals. You're just trying to get everything up under that. So go around the other side and do the same. And then once everything is clearly on the inside, I'll do it from that side so you can see it. Once everything is clearly in, pull down, not much pressure. It's just basically the weight of my arm and a tiny bit of tricep here. And then just put that over the top of that, pull down and that pulls these rubber seals together and compresses. And then you'll see this seal here rides on the outside so that things don't get in. Come around to this side, do the same like that, and then your lock latches. And then take the key, figure out which one it is, because they didn't key the locks the same, which is a real annoyance. Weird, and then sometimes they just don't work at all and you gotta flip them around. Like I said, this is the only serious annoyance that I have with this trailer, is the way they did these locks. Um, everything else is so smoothly done. I can't believe that they just let this, let this go uh, in their testing. And now neither, none of the keys will work, which is, these locks are super finicky and they're, First thing I would replace where I'd own one of these. Anyway, then you lock them. You just have to trust me that it can happen. The ladder, if you haven't used one of these, these ladders are really awesome because uh, they collapse and spread out. So to put it away, under here are some releases. Once you've done that, these rubber feet just come up and all of these release themselves. So each one of them is locked, but as you do that, it pushes the little release and then just use this strap to keep it closed and it goes right in this little bag. If you've seen these ladders before, it was probably a home inspector or somebody like that. Um, they're really common with people that uh, don't need a, for things that don't require a lot of super sturdy, uh, you know, that can hook to something and don't require a lot of super sturdy setup. So that's it. That's the tent. So that's a quick walkthrough of the uh, Taxa Outdoors Woolly Bear Overland Edition. Uh, I really like this. I, I like this concept already, um, just because if you have enough space to park one of these, all your camping gear can be in it. It's all locked. You don't have to worry about it. And uh, you don't have to like have a section of your shed for your camping gear like we do, uh, and then hope that you can fit it all in your vehicle. Um, it's all right there. Pretty much anything can tow this. Uh, really doesn't have very high requirements for towing. Uh, like I said, you could put this on a uh, ball hitch and we could tow it behind our minivan. You could tow it behind, uh, you could put one of these uh, articulating hitches or a regular ball hitch. Uh, you could put that on a, a Subaru, on a small like Ford Maverick, pretty much any small truck. Hyundai Santa Cruz, one of my favorite little trucks, be great for pulling this. Uh, because it just doesn't weigh that much. Even with all your junk in it, you're still under 2,000 pounds. Pretty much anything that can tow can tow at least that much. So, wonderful, wonderful setup. I really like this. Like I said, bear-proof steel construction. Uh, we just locked up all our food at night. We were aware there were bears. I'll show you a photo of, of the warnings on the campsite. Uh, and all of our food, we just shoved it inside at night and closed it up didn't have to worry about it. Uh, we did have uh, a moose 
coming to our camp, uh, but we didn't have any bears. So <laughs> luckily uh, we're experienced campers. We live in Wyoming. We're used to that sort of thing. So we're not Torons. We didn't, uh, we didn't try to go pet the big fluffy moose or anything. <laughs> we just watched it, said hi, waited for it to keep wandering off. Um, but beautiful, beautiful setup. Uh, yeah. I think that's all I got to say. So Taxa Outdoors Woolly Bear Overland Edition. Uh, I really like the concept. I've seen a lot of these. There's a lot of companies that make them. I really like this one in particular because steel. Subscribe.